hey there, I'm Julie McMahon, and I just spent the last probably hour and a half with Kara. Uh, this is the second time we've gotten together. And I have to say, every time we get together, it's a special time. And I really appreciate her, and I really appreciate spending time with her. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Hi friends, it's Kara, and welcome to the 2022 season premiere of Really Famous. It's officially my fifth season. Very exciting. Super appreciative you're here with me, and I'm happy to kick off the new season with Julian McMahon, the star of the CBS Dick Wolf series FBI Most Wanted, who's also well known for his role in the Ryan Murphy series Nip Tuck and the show Charmed. So Julian and I first met in 2020, as you'll hear us talk about. Later, we wanted to have another conversation, do another show together, but it took forever to get it on the books. If you've ever wondered how the booking process goes, what it's like, how long it takes, I will give you a little glimpse into it right now. So most of the time it involves a lot of back and forth. There are a lot of emails with reps, publicists, managers, assistants, coordinating times that work for everybody, making sure my studio or taping venue is free and available, etc., etc. Occasionally, it's super fast. A publicist reaches out to me to pitch a client, or I reach out to invite someone on the show, our schedules align perfectly, and boom, a week or two later, we're taping. Typically, when I'm talking directly to someone who I already know to invite them on the show, like Julian, for example, or Steve Zahn, or Debbie Mazar, Michael Imperioli, Tim Daly, it's easy and it's smooth. We text or email each other, we set it up, and bam, we're up and running. It's my favorite way to go. I love that. Now, with Julian, he is so busy taping FBI Most Wanted that it's nearly impossible to find an hour to catch up. Even when we get a date on the books, it disappears at the last minute because he's called to set. So I'm gonna say that we've had at least five or six dates where we thought we were gonna tape and ended up not taping. But after literally a full year of back and forth, we finally did it. So today we kick things off talking about the mid-season finale of FBI Most Wanted. If you missed it, you can still catch it now on CBS. It's quite an episode, and it was taped at the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. Julian shares some behind-the-scenes insights on the show, and then we get into a conversation about humanity, people, life. And you'll probably notice that we're pretty relaxed with one another, which is nice. You can listen to our first talk, by the way, by clicking in the link in today's show notes. I also put links to the YouTube versions of both of our talks, so you can watch us if you so desire. If you're an FBI fan, you can also tune into my fascinating and very surprising talk with Jeremy Sisto, who's in the flagship series FBI, and who you may also remember from Six Feet Under and Suburgatory. That talk was truly a therapy session. You will see what I mean. I highly recommend it. Today's show is sponsored by the really famous Amazon shop, where you'll not only find all sorts of fun TV and movie paraphernalia and juicy celebrity memoirs and my top product picks, but you can also shop for anything and everything that you regularly buy on Amazon while simultaneously supporting Really Famous. Yes, every time you go to Amazon through my link, which is amazon.com slash shop slash really famous amazon gives us a small advertising fee buy anything anytime simply make sure you go to amazon through my link to support the show and for that i thank you and now my friends the season premiere with julian mcmahon i'll put my phone on airplane right oh an airplane yeah i thought you said airplay which is something different i just got a new car and i have Apple CarPlay, right? Uh-huh. So like when you get in the car, so everything, all your phone things basically automatically go onto your car screen. Do you have that? Oh, wow. No. How is that? Is that good? It's good. And it's also super annoying because sometimes I feel like I can't operate it. Like it has a mind of its own. So 
it's good if I'm plugging in directions to go somewhere. So let's say I'm going on Waze. And then as yeah. soon as I get in the car, it's like right on my screen. Waze is right there. Yeah, it's yeah, telling yeah. me exactly right. what I need to do. But right. other times I feel like it has a mind of its own and I do not know how to control it. So I don't know, yeah. a little good and a little bad. I feel like we're getting a little over controlled by these things. I'm not sure about you, but I don't know. I mean, they're so useful at the same time. It's hard to deny it all, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Although I, I did tell my Alexa that I loved her the other day and she sang me a song. Do you have an Alexa? I do, I do not. We have some in the house. I know my husband bought them at a certain point, but I don't use them. If you just happen by and you're walking by and you want to say, I love you to Alexa, say, say I love you to Alexa and Stuart, see what her response is. I will try that. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. Did you hear about that? I remember hearing something about there was an Alexa on and there was a news story on somebody's TV. And on mm -hmm. the news story, it was basically this girl said, order me this doll, Alexa, or something like that. And then like all these people who had the TV on during this news report, the Alexa started ordering this doll and like from the TV segment. Oh my gosh, you serious? Yeah, so like this company sold all these dolls because of that ah, one. Like a thousand dolls all because of this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So last time, I don't know if you remember, I'm going to refresh your memory from last time we talked. I remember very well. Okay. Hmm. Do you remember we got Zoom bombs? Do you remember that? What's I a Zoom bomb again? I just remember this. So we're talking about technology. It's perfect. So yeah. we were, this was early in the pandemic. So yeah, I think I, you were one of my first Zooms. Like I always do this in yeah. person. So you were one of my first Zooms. And then I didn't yeah. realize at the time that I shouldn't just give out the same number to everybody, yeah. the same meeting That's number. That's right, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're in the middle of talking and suddenly Christopher Knight, who That's had played right. Peter Brady, is on yeah. our Zoom call. <laughs> and that was kind of right at the beginning. Like I think that was like week one or two of the kind of whole shutdown in New York and we had to move somewhere else and this whole zoom thing was just being figured out exactly i mean not even that it was kind of almost even less than not it not being figured out yet absolutely I, I did pretty well i thought we did very well i did too we did great other than that i mean we were i think we were both in focus we had our conversation yeah. going and i think at that point i was really just happy to be talking again yeah yeah and it was also that period of time when i don't know it was kind of a the whole thing was so kind of um kind of shocking and 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 kind of um unexpected and all of these things were happening and i kind of, i remember that i remember exactly where we where i was and, and just kind of feeling a little kind of lost and and wanting to you know because we got shut down in the middle of production and kind of yeah wanting to you know, keep producing television for, I, I don't know. It felt a little bit like the world was ending and I felt like I wanted to go back and make more television. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was kind yeah. of, and then it was interesting because that, I think you and I talked about our first or second week, you know, when, after we left New York and we then spent eight months on a road trip and it was meant to be, it was like a three week. We were, we were told it was going to be like this three week thing where, you know, everything would be fine in three weeks and it'd go back to normal and whatever. And it was eight months later, we were back in New York and up and running again. That's crazy. So crazy, you're in right? New York now though, right? You're, I mean, you're filming. Yeah. Okay, you have major hours on this show. Like you're mm. always working, am I right? Oh, always, always. Like, what are we talking about? Well, you know, depending, you know, I'm trying to bring them down a little bit. The pandemic actually helped a little bit. The first season was, you know, 15, 16 hours a day minimum. Um, and then second season, we went to a 10 hour max on set. So that goes to, um, you know, probably a 14 hour day for me kind of thing. Um, and then we're kind of about that now, depending, sometimes we've got a little bit more and, but like today, you know, I, I try to get moments off. I had a bunch of doctor's appointments today. So I had an excuse to get, a, <laughs> to get the day off. It's hard to, you know, I mean, the thing is I love working too. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's about, it's really about trying to find that balance of, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of consciousness of making sure that you're keeping yourself, self healthy. Um, you know, I like to stay fit. I mean, the fitter I feel, the better I feel. So, you know, it's just kind of yeah. figuring it out and it's, it's a, it's a hard, it's a, it's always a gamble. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. the episode that we have next Tuesday, for example, the Christmas episode, that one was really 
uh, difficult. Um, we shot in a mall for like almost two weeks. Um, and it was good. We had to start super, super early. So I was up at like two and, um, you know, we need to finish shooting inside the mall by 11 or 10 30 or whatever it was, okay. uh, because people were coming to the mall, you know, so then you kind of lose your rhythm of like, when do you work out? Well, I don't work out at one thirty in the morning because um, you know what I mean? So you got to kind of figure that out. Then you get home, you're so kind of fried that you're like, I don't want to. Then you lose the rhythm of working out at all. You know what I mean? So then you got to bring that back in. So, you know, I've kind of worked out that on set I, I work out. So I've got I got those bands, which actually Kellen showed me years ago. And I was like, I don't do bands. I don't worry. I do go to the gym. And so obviously, I was a lot further ahead in the evolution of that than I was. But um, so we're talking about resistance bands. Yeah, you know, those resi- but they're really good. Like they actually get like a re- really good workout. And then I try to, you know, go for a run three times a week, a week, bike three times a week. And then yoga, I try to do that every day. So it's just like, you know, I get up like an hour and a half before I go to work. So if I get picked up at 5.30, I'm up at like 4 or 3.30. And then I do my uh, yoga. And then if I get the chance to do the bike, I'll do that. And, and then Thanksgiving will come in the mix. And the next thing you know, you're cooking. And <laughs> I, I did not stop cooking the whole Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I'm more of a baker than a than a cook. But yes, yeah, so my husband does more of that stuff. I do more of the dessert yeah. stuff. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. You like what's it? Did we talk about that? The Great British Bake Off? I don't think so. Are you into no? that? I'm upset. Oh, yeah. I mean, are, are you obsessed? not? So I, I haven't watched it in maybe two years, but I was at a certain point. Um, I love like I loved everything about it. I love Mary Berry, but she's not on anymore. Is she? she no, was but the girl proved the lady Prue who's on it now, she's fantastic. I mean, it's still got Paul Hollywood and it just, it still runs to the same rhythm. You know what I mean? And you, I mean, a lot of it's about the guests that they have on and the kind of com- competitive part of it and, and the camaraderie between them and that kind of stuff. But then you get some, mm-hmm. this season, this last season with just some of the bacon, if you're a baker, uh, some of the bacon is extraordinary. I just love how nice of a show it is. Like, it feels so good. It's not I, like that oh, negative drama. Oh, yeah. I was talking to my wife about that. I'm like, I think i got to rewatch this because it just makes me feel so, like, good about people or the world or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yes. it's not nasty. It's conniving. It's not uh, ridiculously competitive that we just, you know, mm-hmm. spite each other in some kind of way. It's... It's just people being people and doing what they do. And it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's like this character driven piece, you know, and it's so funny because I always start the season like, oh, that guy. Oh. And then, you know, two, three episodes, I'm like, I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you get to know the real person, I guess, right? They grow on you. <laughs> it's like, just like, a, I mean, it's like proper television. I mean, it is, I know it is, but it just kind of feels weird when you're talking about a baking show, but. Well, um, another show yeah. that's good, another show that's redeeming is, have you seen Stanley Tucci's show, the CNN show? I think it's on uh, HBO Max now, uh, Searching for Italy, where he goes around to different regions. No, but I saw, yeah, actually, I saw like a short on it or whatever, you know, the advertising thing or whatever. And, okay, and that's good? It is. So, of course, you have Italy and you have that amazing food, and that's all good. And Stanley Tucci is fun, too. But it's yeah, like he sure. meets with all these Italians, all these locals, and it's just they're all so great. And you just mm-hmm. you just want to hang out with all of them. So it redeems mm-hmm. sort of your idea of society again. Like, yes, everything is good. All can be good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, good. I'll check it out. All right. So what else are you watching these days? Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm, I haven't actually been watching much television at all. Um I'm, I just started rerunning, and this is not. Oh my! It's so funny that you bring that up, actually, because I, I was, I've, I've just, I've been a little bit exhausted, and I was like, I've got to find something that just makes me feel good, you yeah. know. As you're saying, exactly as you're saying, right? Just mm-hmm. makes me feel. Just I don't need. I don't even need really good comedy. I don't need really good, you know, laugh out loud stuff. It's not that. I just need something that makes me feel mm-hmm. warm and good and whatever. So I started rewatching. Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever watch the show? Yeah, I did. I loved it. That's another one that's just kind of warms the heart. You know, it's a lot of those kind of British shows, I guess. But um, yeah, I watched it the first time around and I loved it. It's amazing how much I'd forgotten in the from the from when I finished watching it, it was probably what five years ago, or whatever. And now I'm rewatching it. And 
I mean, completely obsessed once again. So, you know, and I said, no more than one episode a day, right? I gave myself a limit. I'm like, the other day I was watching, like, just one more. I could do one more. I could do two. I know that'd be fine if I did two. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. When you find a show like that, it's like you just, it's gold. And then when it ends, right? it's like, oh, this is the worst. No, what am I going to watch? But I'm not really watching anything else. Too. I have some to recommend, I guess. Um... Well, you know, they're not that light and fluffy, though. Like, I've been watching a lot more comedies lately. I do feel like I'm at the point in, like, what I think it has to, something to do with the pandemic, probably, where I don't yeah. want all the heavy things, necessarily. So I've been watching a lot of lighter shows. The other two, have you seen that? on? That's also no. HBO Max. With Molly Shannon, mm -hmm. that's very funny. Um, wait, there's something else that I love, and I'm totally blanking out on it. Oh, there's actually... Uh, I, f I started watching something and then I kind of forgot about it. You just reminded me of it. It was really cute. It was one of the girls from Saturday Night Live and I can't remember the actor, but it's like a, they, they're they about to get a divorce or something. Is that divorce? It, no, no, no. That's, uh, no, I know that one. That's um, Sarah Jessica Parker, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. This, uh Because you said Molly Shannon. It's not Molly Shannon, but it is... And it's like they go back and they do all this musical and they're like back in the 50s and they're singing like this. No, ridiculous. I don't know okay. That, I feel like I would know. Like when I think of these musical ones, I'm thinking of, um, you know, the one that everybody watches on Amazon, uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There's that oh, one. Oh, I love that show. Yeah, great show. So let's talk about this episode of FBI. All right, mm. it's major. I turned it on this mm. morning. I watched it. So it took you mm. two weeks to do it? Just the, the mall. mall part. Just the mall part. Yeah. So, okay, so how does that work? First of all, what's the mall? Where where was it? They said it was Brooklyn, but where, where actually was it? It was in New Jersey. Uh, it's called America's Mall. America's Mall? And, uh, yeah, America's Mall Is that that big, Jersey. gigantic quite... mall? Ginormous. It's got a ski slope. It's got ice rink. It's got... Um, it's spectacular. It's it's the most. It's, and I, if the story is true, and this is what I was told by the gentleman who kind of was running the joint when we were there, um, it opened literally before the right, just before the pandemic. Like that it's Christmas, true. Right. Is yeah. that true? Yeah. And it is the scale is. I've never seen anything like it. I'm sure there's something like it in Texas or something, but I've never seen anything like it. And uh, I just, it, it's, you know, it's still probably at, I don't know, 50, 60% capacity in regards to, you know, uh, all of the um, shops being taken mm -hmm. up and stuff. So, I mean, it just kind of was one of those bad timing things, but it, it, it's an amazing place. Um, I probably will never go back there. There again, just simply because I spent so much time there at around about four o'clock in the morning that <laughs> I'm I get not it. sure I'm ever going to fall again. <laughs> well, I have to tell you also, so when I started watching it, it did actually freak me out right away because I was in a similar but not anywhere near this situation at one point at a mall. So I was in, I don't know if you even heard about this on the news. It was, I feel like it was March 2019. And I was in LA, it was at the Century City Mall. So I'm meeting a friend for mm -hmm. lunch and I had done interviews for the whole week. I go out to LA for about a week at a time, then I come back here. So I was mm -hmm. wrapping up all my interviews, meeting my friend at the Century City Mall at a restaurant that's anchoring the mall, but it's like outside the entrance. So I'm sitting outside mm -hmm. the restaurant entrance and she texts me and she said, there's a shooter in the mall. And so I then suddenly I saw people just running, like exactly like in this episode, there were just people running outside. And then the, it was, I don't even know what to say, except that mm -hmm. I will never forget it. We all basically just ran as far away from the mall as we could. Nobody was hurt, luckily, in the end, but the whole mall was on lockdown and there were just helicopters, police officers everywhere. And um, there was somebody with a gun. And mm. uh, it was really scary. So as soon as I saw this episode, I was like, it really felt realistic to me. Like, this is exactly what it felt like. Mm. When you were ready to do it, did you have to kind of get into some kind of mental armor or something like that? Well, firstly, that's a intense experience that you had. Um, 
I remember that. I absolutely remember that. Um, I do think, interestingly, I was just thinking about the response to that. It was pretty spectacular, I thought. You're, you're at Century City Mall, that yeah. Beverly Hills Police Department is really good. The uh, SWAT, the, I, mean, I think it was really kind of in regards to how those things shake down, which is all, not always positive. Uh, and I'm not saying that this was positive, but certainly in regards to what could have happened, I think that they handled that quite well. I agree. It was very quick. And I have never seen so many police cars, ambulances, helicopters, the works, like instantly. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So, yeah, I mean, ours was like, I didn't have that experience that you had. Um, and and, and I'm, I, that would have troubled me if I had, of, I think. So I'm hoping that you're okay after watching the episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, okay. yeah, I, I really okay. felt like it was well done. It was not traumatic okay. for me, but okay. I appreciate your concern. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I think it was about, you know, trying to, you know, we, we hear so much about those things and you, you see them and it was about, it was just basically about trying to create the reality of what that would feel like, that kind of chaos. And then without giving too much away as well, you know, um, the whole thing starts off with, you know, me and my family shopping for Christmas gifts in the mall so you can only imagine if you're the audience and not you because i know uh what happens then but um it really and uh, look i keep saying it about this show and i keep trying to find it no matter what's going on and that is that the the piece is driven with this kind of emotional uh, core attached to it and I think that we did that from day one, and I've tried to maintain that as often as possible. And that is this kind of connection to family, to people that you care for. Uh, in this particular show, in these kind of circumstances, it envelops everybody because it's the you know it's it's my family, um, uh, Roxy who plays Barnes's family, um, and uh, then my team, you know, and and so it's really kind of all the people that you care about uh, uh, are either in jeopardy or, or really concerned for your well-being. Mm -hmm. And so it creates this environment of, because uh, I just saw it too, I saw it in a cut a while ago, but I just saw the final cut. And it, it creates this kind of, you know, it's a deeper, it's a, it's a, it's a it's an emotional journey from the moment you start because you're dealing with, with people you love mm -hmm. and, and that's set up really quickly. And then the next thing you know, we're in and we're going and it goes and it's a fast paced piece. It's uh, uh, it moves really nicely. It moves really quickly. Um, uh, it's chaotic. Uh, and then in the midst of all of that kind of drama and chaos and, and kind of ill will, is this beautiful kind of family story, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and I love it, you know, like even that scene where they, you know, the um, uh, Tally and Sarah caught with that guy and I won't explain it too much because I don't want to give away too much, but, you know, it's emotional, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, hope, I'm, I'm assuming that our audience is pretty much kind of tapped into the emotional core of our show so they care about the characters. And so it's it to like, right? That's the trick, I think, with the show, right? Because you have all the storylines and the action and all of that, but the real thing that probably keeps people glued to it week after week, I would think, you know better than I do, is the human, the family stories. Well, I think you probably know just as well as I do, but yeah, that's it, right? It's the connection to your heart or your spirit or your mind or something that you invest in, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think we invest in all of these characters and so, and they're all completely invested in this piece. Now, if I get dark, just so you know, the sun's setting over here. Sorry, I I'm, I'm, don't know where I am right now. So. I know, I see, but that's okay. Yeah. The same thing yeah. happened the other day for me. So I, somebody, I, was, I was interviewing, it was Apollo Ono. Do you remember him? He was a speed skater in the Olympics. Right. Of course, so yes. He, so I'm interviewing him a couple of days ago. The same thing happened. He became yeah. like a white, bright white. <laughs> I got one of these 
beautiful light things or whatever this is from from work so if i need to turn that on you let me know and i'll okay I'll... what is it what do you have like a ring light or is it an led yeah, it's or like something? a ring on a stand <clears throat> yeah yeah okay so i'll but keep an look, eye out i mean it's gonna look horrible for a second yeah but you know what it but it, it'll adjust it'll look fine after but don't use it yet you know why because i don't want it to run is it plugged in or is it battery no it's plugged it's oh ready it's to... plugged oh okay yeah. So you yeah. know what? Maybe you should turn it on. Turn it on. Let's see what happens. It'll okay. probably adjust after a couple of seconds. So it might look weird at first. But, oh, wait. Now it's off. Okay. Now hold on. Oh, are you trying the different settings? No, I'm just trying to turn it on because I, oh. I think if I go it goes hotter, right? Yeah, it goes really. That's so good. So that's low. That's and good. And then you can change the color of the thing. So that's like a yellowy kind of thing. And then that's like a mixed and that's white. I think I like a little slightly yellower. Yeah. That's mixed yellow and white. Maybe mixed. Yellow, yellow. That's good too, actually, right there. Okay. I like that. All right. Let's keep so that. We'll, is that okay? And then I won't disappear. I don't want to be just fading into the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you're good, just like that. So we'll keep it like that. It's good okay. to have those lights. You need yeah. to do it because I used to do the same thing. I would set myself up right in front of a window. So during the day, when the days weren't so short. I yeah. found that the window light was better mm. than any. I've tried all the different lights because after mm. COVID, I had to get the whole setup at home. So mm. I tried that. And then I realized one day that the actual window and then I would turn off all the lights in my yeah, yeah. in the room and it was oh, perfect. Yeah. But then right. the clock switched. I know. Then it's getting dark at 330. Um, I did exactly the same thing because after I saw saw you, uh, you know, we went. For, I went, for, like I said, I, I did an eight month road trip. So, and I was going to places I never even thought I was going or, you know what I mean? Like it was like this unpredictable whatever. And so I'd arrive at all these places, never I'd go. I've kept doing, because we were still trying to keep the show going and 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 remain kind of, um, kind of just stay present in regards to the show. Um, and so, I, you know, we did all these promos and interviews and stuff. And every, uh. I found everything was like, just get in front of that natural light that's coming through the window on it. It looks good. It's still everything. It's all about yeah. the natural light. I'm a believer in that. I know you can't do it in a studio, but I am a believer in natural light. Oh, I am good. Okay, so you, it took two weeks just to tape inside the mall. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about malls now? <laughs> oh, I love them, man. I uh, can't wait to go to my next mall. I uh, want to hang out there again. No, you know, it's so funny because I couldn't stop shopping. And this is just so ridiculous. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened. I mean, of course, I know what happened, but I don't. I haven't shopped for I don't know how long. Like, first of all, I don't do anything but work, so there's no point in me shopping. I have a closet full of clothes as big as this room, and it, I don't wear any of them. I just wear my stuff that I go to work in and whatever, right? So I'm, I I do not need to shop. But you're sitting in a mall, right? And you're working in a mall, and it's just looking at you the whole time. And it's everything from clothing to shoes to Best Buy to, you know, and so I just kept shopping, you know, chocolates. I went to Best Buy. And I think I got, I ordered three computers. What? I don't know. I don't even know what happened. And then I left and I was so kind of um, exhausted and nauseated by the mall. I called them and said, I can't come and pick them up. And they're like, well, we can <laughs> deliver them. And I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. <laughs> that is so funny. So you canceled the order completely? Yes. I canceled the computers. Oh, my God. I'm, so, I'm glad I did, too, because my wife would have killed me. Yeah, no, it was really funny. It was really, I couldn't stop. It just beckoned. So that's so funny. Yeah. But that's why they, I mean, malls are still happening, right? So for a reason, they know what they're doing. They, they, oh. They're like, if we can get people in, we're, we're going to sell things. And by the way, I love that. You know what I mean? Like when I moved over from from Australia to California, you know, the Beverly Center, you know, the Beverly Center? Yeah. I mean, I just, I was there every day, every day. And then going to the movies or shopping, you know, with money I probably didn't even have. So, you know, they certainly know what they're doing, but they also, I don't know, there's a, there's a sense of, you know, we were talking about that kind of Bake Off, British, Italian kind of feel good thing about people. Yeah. And I don't know, there's something about malls that kind of makes you feel comfort that you can just kind of get everything, everything you want. So I get it. I'm not a mall person by nature, but 
It is interesting though, too. So you haven't shopped in a long time. You have clothes everywhere. Are you a clothes person? Like, do you feel like I want to wear these things and go out places or do you not care? Oh, no, I love it. I just don't have the time. You know, I've been, you know, so I grew up in a family that were very fashion conscious, right? Um, and so my, you know, my mom had all of her outfits tailored by really big designers. My dad got all of his suits tailored, uh, shoes, everything. Right. So I grew up in this world of fashion in a way. Right. And then I started modeling when I was young. And that kind of brought me into that side of the business as well. And I started designing my clothes at one point, and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff as well. So, you know, there's a big part of me that really enjoys that stuff creatively. Um, and kind of, I think I have it in my system. You know what I mean? I just, I don't think you can grow up the way that I did and not have it in your system. So, you know, I did a show called Nip Tuck for, you know, eight years. And one of the great things about that character was the clothes. I mean, I got to, you know, I designed a lot of my own, own suits there and we tailored everything in specific ways. And, you know, but I, I went home with a lot of those suits. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? I even went with balls, plus I shot myself. Like I'm, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not cautious. You know what I mean? I'm not kind of, I don't, you know, when, I mean, I'm not like, I don't do it all the time, but when I go, I go and I go hard. If that makes sense. And so I just, I've definitely, my, my closets are, are full and don't, you know. Well, it's kind of a shame for them to sit there like that. Oh, I like know. it's a bummer. No, I have some suits. I just found four suits that I got in Scotland two years ago, right before the pandemic, 2019. I took the family over to, uh, we went to England, uh, London, and uh, Northern England, and then Scotland. And there's a store in Scotland, which is just one of my favorite stores. It's a it's a suit store. Um, and I bought four suits and then came back, the pandemic happened, and I just, Literally found them the other day, and there's four suits, and they've got tags on them, they haven't kind of been <sighs> cut properly, and yeah, so, I, yeah, I, 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 love, I love dressing up, you know what I mean? I kind of was thinking, should I dress up just to use my clothes? Should I dress up just to go to work? But I'm like, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning, it just doesn't feel the same. No, but also, you're not going to be wearing them. They're going to be, well, like, gonna, hung yeah. up. I'll be in a car and nobody, you know what I mean? It's just, it'll, I'll be doing it just for myself. And maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, but I can't quite get myself to understand the sense of it. Yeah. I think that I, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't think you want to wear them there to get ruined and then not even be worn. That's you're going to have to put them yeah. away anyway. You have to wear whatever they have out for you. No. And I started wearing a couple of things like random, like I was like, you know, just wear that. And I was like, and they got really disappointed because it got kind of, you know, destroyed somehow. I was like, oh, that's a bummer that I did that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So you're in New York right now. So I think when we last talked, you were technically bi-coastal, right? Like you were, you have a place in California too? Or am I mm -hmm. making this up? No, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So interestingly, I just went back to the place in California for the first time since I left in 2019. First time? Yep. And... So, because with the pandemic, we stayed on this coast. The interest, the thing about it was, we, we thought we were going to back to work all the time, right? So from July 4th, around about July 4th, we were kind of, we were going to go back. And then it kept getting pushed two weeks, and then two weeks, and then two weeks, whatever it was. And then and then by that time, it was like, oh, let's just, we're just here. Let's just, you know, finish it out, and we'll drive back up, you know what I mean? Um, at that point, we were kind of down in Florida or something. And... Um, but what a gift. I mean, I got to spend it with my wife, my daughter, and uh, three dogs. So they're all here with you in New York now? Yeah. Now, is your daughter in college? I think I remember you saying she was starting college. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. She's in college. Oh, uh, one of the dogs, we lost one of the dogs. So we've only got, we got two, two of the dogs and a uh, very sad, a beautiful I'm girl. Sorry. Um, yeah. So we've got two of the dogs left, but she had this, um, <laughs> it was kind of funny because she did have this kind of extraordinary last year, you know, like all of these places that we went to were so kind of, you know, pro dogs and we just, you know, and, and also just not, you know, being in the pandemic, you weren't kind of doing much except for hanging out at home. And so I walked the dog. 
You know what I mean? I know. My dog started to get so used to getting walked all the time that like yeah. she got in this habit of being like twice a day for these long walks like hello yeah. why aren't you walking me now but it's like okay yeah. that yeah. was good for a while but we can't continue that many long walks every day yeah so. and long ones too right yes. like, I'd, I'd be fine if i went for two hours i was i was above it so and then they're like i know when out when <laughs> when we came back our dogs were so fit and then after a couple of months i'm like they're getting a little <laughs> had to put them on the diet because they just weren't getting those. Like I did a minimum of two two hour hikes uh, per day. All right. So tell me about going back to California. How did it feel? It was wild because the house, you know, we've had some um, people live in it and staying up, but not in kind of our section of the house. And it was like a time warp. It was like this. I, I, you know, it was almost, it was like my slippers were just sitting there and, you know, all that stuff that you have, you know, all your personal stuff by the side of the bed, whatever that is for everybody, you know, your cup of water or your, you know, whatever it is. It was all just sitting there. Like, because when I left, it was July 2019, right? Yeah, July 2019. And we were for sure coming back in 2000, in, in, sorry, in, in um, Thanksgiving. I was for sure about it. I'll be back. I'll, I'll, everybody, I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't, don't, not anymore about it. I'll see you soon. Because I just thought that was what was going to happen. But then Thanksgiving came around. I was so exhausted. I was like, I can get off. I got to sleep for four days. So that didn't happen. Then the London trip and then the pandemic. And it just kept on. We were actually going to go this last summer. We did a road trip. Because now I'm obsessed with road trips, by the way. Oh, you are? Oh, completely. I mean, I'm also obsessed with America right now. Oh, tell so, me about that. I'm interested. Well, well, you just kind of always go somewhere else, right? Like you get on a plane and go to, I don't know, somewhere, Mexico or, you know. And the the forced kind of road trip that we had in 2020, you know, I mean, I remember having discussions with, I don't even know Florida. I'm like, oh my God, Florida. I'm obsessed with Florida. Like you obsessed. are? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I need to know more because A, I went to college in Florida. So I know okay, Florida. Where'd you go? I went to the University of Florida. It's in Gainesville. Is, yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Big college, right? Large. Yeah, big college. Big, yeah. big, uh, you know, that's like the school. Or, you know, I'm yeah. a graduate. So, of course, I'm going to be like, that is the school in Florida. Oh, there it is. Sure. But yeah, so then I lived in Orlando for a while after I graduated. And I've been yeah. to, you know, Florida has political issues, but let's not get into that. But I've been to Florida. I th we've taken, we did a road trip. We drove all the way down during so the pandemic. So you drove from New York down to Florida? Yeah, great. Great trip, huh? It was, it was not bad. We were driving in, in February and we're like, let's just do it. I didn't really want to fly at that point. So we drove all the way down to like the Palm Beach area. And right, okay. uh, it was easy and it was really good to be there. So, but never mind me. So tell me more about what you're obsessed with about Florida. Like what, what do you like, what do you, when, where do you go? I'm obsessed with all, and I haven't seen all of it yet, right? But, um, so the uh, Atlantic coast, you know, once you get below, what is it probably like, is it, is it Tampa on that side or is it, no, Tampa's no. on the other side, right? So whatever's on the, um, so like maybe two hours above Stewart or something, it gets that tropical zone. Yeah. Um, you know, that whole coastline is just, I mean, that whole coastline, by the way, from Canada down is spectacular. Definitely. You know, going through Maryland or Delaware, going through Virginia, Mm -hmm. going through the Carolinas, going through Georgia. I mean, those out-of-bank things and all that stuff is just really spectacular. Yeah. This last I mean, summer. that's the beach to me. That's what I think of because I grew up here on the East yeah. Coast. So to me, it's like those, that Atlantic and with those beaches, that's yeah. normal to me. Like when I think about California beaches, they're beautiful, but like it's not at yeah. all what I think of as the norm. But yeah, so all the way up and down the coast, so, so you get a little north of Stewart, and then, then you yeah. start feeling good because it's tropical. Well, it just gets tropical, so it's like, except for probably maybe July, August, which is just too hot, maybe a bit of June. You know, the rest of the time, it's just the weather is just fantastic. 
right? So, you know, you can, and then the, the water, the clarity of the water there is beautiful. And then you go up to the Gulf Coast, where I spent quite a bit of time too. Um, I kind of don't even want to talk about it because I don't want anyone else to go there. I know. It's, and trust me, there's, there's a lot of people there already. So I know. Like, the secret's not out. But, oh, man. There's one place that to me is the best. And I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, even though we're going to reveal it. Have okay. you been to Marco Island? No. Really? I've heard about it. No, I haven't. But I actually was going, we looked at a house to go and stay there, but I did, we didn't end up going there. So that I believe is maybe the southernmost place in, on the Gulf Coast, right before you get to the Everglades. So yeah. okay. or I guess it's like a cross, it's actually west of the Everglades. I'm not really sure of the geography exactly, but um, yeah. I really like it there. The beaches there are so beautiful and it's mm -hmm. quiet. You know, maybe after this, it won't be quiet, but yeah. No, I know. Well, I mean, it's, you know, now a lot of people are traveling in, in the U.S. anyway, and the whole place is kind of getting found out. But, and not to say you don't want to, to be, but the beaches that, I mean, I, I, nobody told me how um, spectacular the beaches are. The beautiful blue water and the beach, the, that kind of real mm -hmm. kind of sugary white color and, people are fun and you know it's just just yeah okay so do you drive down what do you do like do you get i know i know put it this way i know next summer that i'm going back okay but summer is very hot there it really is it's very so the hot. golf coast i firstly i go there probably about may may beginning of june okay so it's kind of hasn't got to that super hot but if that the golf coast i don't know about the golf coast once you get like that lower part of the boot there or whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> then it gets hot, right? But not that, that, um, because I never felt overwhelmed heat wise, um, uh, you know, on that, on that Gulf Coast part. So I, I mean, I've spent some time there and I've never <laughs> not been hot in the summer. I can say that, but I don't know. I haven't been everywhere in the middle of summer, but I've been in Gainesville in the middle of summer. I've been in Orlando in the middle of summer, and I've been in like that South Florida area on the East Coast in the middle of summer, and it's hot. And Key West right. also did that in July once. It was right. hot. Too hot. Yeah, too hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to hear that's beautiful too. Where? Key West? Key West, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Keys are they're like, of course, they're yeah. beautiful. It's like, how, how did that even happen? It's so, it's yeah. so beautiful. Um, yeah. So you have to keep me posted on that. Okay, so you're still exploring that. You're obsessed with America. So you want to go to other places too? So um, Maryland, what a wonderful spot that is. North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia. You ever been in Blue Ridge, Georgia? No. It's oh, unbelievable. Um, How's this one? Alabama. I've never been to Alabama. We were driving, so we were going along whatever that freeway is that goes the whole way along the bottom of, of the Gulf Coast there from Florida. We were heading to New Orleans and on our way to California. And mm -hmm. then that hurricane hit New Orleans. And we did this weird thing. And I was like, I, we, we don't want to, so we don't want to go that way. I said, let's go north. We went north, then we got hit by a tornado. Next thing you know, we went up that way and we're kind of heading back east as opposed to heading west, right? This is all happening in, you know, a few hours, right? And then we arrived in Selma, right? On, is it Juneteenth? Is that what it's called? Juneteenth? Uh -huh. Yeah. And we arrived on the Juneteenth celebration. We met this woman who lived next to Martin Luther King when she was a young girl. We went to his parish and did the, you know, the 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 march that they did, the follow march mm -hmm. they did, everything, and had this really kind of extraordinary historical tour. I mean, it was really quite overwhelming to be honest, because it was so touching and and people that were so connected to it, so kind of sad in some ways and so pathetic and beautiful in other ways. And then from there went to a place a little further up north uh and just found this resort that we went and just had this amazing time in and then after that went to another 
place in Georgia. And just everywhere we went was just, you know, the people were just so kind of engaging and connected and, and grounded. Mm -hmm. You know, that saying, salt of the earth kind of thing. The salt of the earth, I guess, comes from a more coastal perspective, but it's it's a it's an earthy kind of quality. It's a kind of grounded quality. To, and, and the antithesis of that, you've got, you know, New York City, right? And everybody's buzzing around doing whatever. And, and not to criticize New York City, because I absolutely am loving it took me a little while, by the way, to get used to it. Oh, my it first up there. I just thought that place was crazy. Crazy. I'm like, this, these people are nuts. I don't know how, you, I don't know how you do it. This is just absolutely nutty. I think I'm just going to have to sit in the apartment. I just won't go out ever. And then I get you on know, slowly. I'm like, this place, New York is unreal. Yeah. Uh, the city's unreal. Restaurants, obviously, everybody knows about that. I'm not saying anything new. But I mean, also things like upstate New York, which we get to shoot at a lot. Connecticut, and I know that's Connecticut, and it's not New York, but it feels like New York, and it's kind of a part of the mix. Connecticut seems to be here, if that makes sense. Um, Long Island, uh, I mean the the history, the 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 beauty. I mean, you know, people always talk about the Hamptons. I remember living here years ago um, in the '90s, and I come out to the Hamptons, but it was you know I was younger, and it was all kind of kind of somewhat party oriented you know man you had friends you had a friend or somebody knew or somebody had a house or something whatever and you came out and everybody was kind of having fun and throwing parties and all that kind of stuff and it was all during summer and then to actually experience this place in those not so popular months and then throughout winter um it it, it really kind of shows you the beauty and the kind of, I guess, the organic and original draw of this place, right? Of the the island itself, the whole. I mean, Long Island's huge, by the way. I never even thought like I, I can't, I'm still trying to figure out why Manhattan became Manhattan. Like, wouldn't you build that on Long Island? I just it just it doesn't quite make sense. Well, probably because it was protected a little bit, right? Because didn't they need to protect things to have a little bit of a harbor or something? Because wouldn't Long Island be too exposed, maybe? I don't know. I well, don't you know, know what? I, I've looked into a few different things. And the one that I keep getting go, going back to is Manhattan itself was built on a very specific bedrock. But Long, but Long Island is not. And it's a bedrock that was used as a foundation, still used as a foundation. You can go down into the bedrock in Manhattan for like five stories and build foundations that you can't do on Long Island. Oh, well, there you go. That makes sense, I guess. Right. And then it was accompanied with um, the, the, you know, the fact that a lot of the wealth and the wealth was extraordinary at that point in time. Um you know, you know, what is it, Vanderbilt and, and Rothschilds and blah, 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 was whatever, right? And there were, there were quite a few, you know, that's only a couple of names in the mix, but there were plenty. Started to kind of compete with each other in regards to building buildings. So the next thing you know, these buildings are just being built. They're literally being built just to outbuild the other one instead of, you know, actually build to a combat. Like Empire State Building apparently was unoccupied for about two years. That's so interesting. It's funny that you say that because I just was la listening last night to a podcast with Anderson Cooper as the guest yeah, yeah. on the podcast. And so mm -hmm. he, of course, comes from the Vanderbilt family. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was saying how a lot of the, they, a lot of these buildings that you see in New York now were actually mansions. So I forget who it was. I think his great, great, great grandfather or something he had a mansion that is now, I want to say Bergdorf Goodman is mm -hmm. actually what it is now. But that mm -hmm. whole building was mm -hmm. actually that, you know, the family's home, mm -hmm. which took up like a whole city block. Mm -hmm. But wait, I want to go back. I'm going to change the subject back to what you just said about mm -hmm. salt of the earth, because I'm interested I know. in that. Sorry, I'm, I'm going all over the place. Here. That's well, that's what I do, too. I like it. This is the kind of talk I like. We did it last time. We're doing it this time. It's all good. So okay. um, so salt of the earth, I wanted to. So I'm wondering, so do you like to kind of just get to know and talk to people who you meet along the way in life. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Do you like to... That to me is what it's all about. I feel, I get that from you. I feel like I could see you on these road trips and you're going through all these different places. And do you like to just kind of get to know people and 
what their story yeah, is? That's everybody, you know, and I think, you know, I got my dad was a politician. And so he was like a and he was a natural politician, not not a forced one. Does that make sense? Like that yeah. it suited it suited his personality. Like he liked going in Australia they call it your electorate, right? So if you're the mayor of New York City, he, my dad liked going around the city and talk shaking hands and saying yeah. hello and hey, you know, and, you know. And then my mom, you know, my mom was just always known as like she could, you know, you'd find her at a gala with the queen. And then the next day you'd see her at a pub, you know, with a truck driver next door. You know what I mean? So there was no real, it it wasn't classist or it Uh wasn't kind of elitist or anything like that. It was this multi everything. It was uh, all cultures, all people. And, you know, so it, it can be anybody from the, you know, the guy you made at the front gate to the guy at the room next door to, you know what I mean? And that's kind of, you know, the, those conversations are the fun ones because you get to learn about the people and you get to learn about the travels, you get to learn about yeah. the areas, you get to learn about, you know, and some of these places, particularly in uh, when we're in Georgia and Alabama, I mean, the people are just so interesting to talk to. And mm-hmm. A lot of or have been there their whole lives and then, you know, they really don't kind of, you know, leave that area at all and if at all maybe just kind of short periods of time right, right. um but uh you know there's just there's just a, a and there's a calmness to it that um is kind of soothing right like we were talking yeah. about earlier that just kind of makes you right. feel it kind of makes you want to open up and have conversation you know what i mean right because it's like all about the human connection and it's all really all about people. It's like the, everything in life is really just about people. I feel mm-hmm. like at least I've come to realize that or mm-hmm. this is like what I feel like more and more. I, mm-hmm. Everybody's so interesting. So I'm interested also in hearing everybody's stories, but I also like like what you're saying, that ability to just it just feels good to be interacting and getting to know people. It mm-hmm. just feels right. Mm-hmm. So do people recognize you though? Like, is that kind of a barrier for you, or do you feel like they don't if you're out just meeting people here and there? Some do, some don't. But I don't really care. You know what I mean? I don't really. I mean, you can tell when somebody's a little funky. Uh huh. You know, you can tell when somebody's maybe a little too, <laughs> too kind of. But I mean, I don't even mind. I mean, I don't mind any of them to be honest. I mean, I you know. Maybe I maybe I did more when I was younger or something. But I don't know. It's all it's all part of the journey, right? It's all kind of, you know. I also like look at it as if it's um, it's kind of what I'm asking for. Okay. Right. I mean, I don't. I don't. I didn't put myself in front of a camera and put it on TV screens all around the country for people to ignore me. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> so. I kind of, I kind of think it's, it's part of the thing, you know, and, and as I was saying a moment ago with my dad being a politician, there's a part of that politician and being an actor for me, it's part of the, you know, um, you know, the, I, I kind of, enjoy the thing, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm, and I'm happy that they, I feel blessed that they've spent time watching a show or watching another show or watching a movie that I did or whatever it is. I don't, I don't mean. Right. And it feels to me like you're probably the same no matter what. Like whether people recognize you and you're Julian McMahon when they're talking to you or you're just somebody who they happen to run into who struck up a conversation with them. I feel like you would be the same way or is there pressure to because you're you know, is there a pressure to be a certain way? I, I feel like even if there is, I don't feel like you even buy into it. I don't think so. And I don't even I don't even look at that as pressure. I look at that as kind of cool. Network, you know, mm. what do we talk about next? You know, what do you do? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean that's kind of yes. the thing, right? Yeah. It's really interesting thing being on this show, too, because... Uh, you know, playing an FBI agent and then kind of being in the mix of this kind of group of people that I work with um, in New York. It's it's just these kind of hardworking, family oriented, good people, like mm. the good people. You know what I mean? And so then I don't feel like, uh, you know, I mean, it might sound naive, 
and, I, and I'm certainly not. I'm aware of it. I can't help but be aware of it, having lived the life that I've lived. But you know, I I kind of look at us like we're all part of the mix, right? So you're just as interesting as I am. Just in fact, maybe even more so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, there's some characters out there, man, and I love them. You know. That's for sure. And you're definitely yeah. seeing them also in New York, but they're not just in New York. They're all they're all over. There are they're some interesting over. characters out there. Personally, oh, yeah. I love a character. I love them. The more interest, I just feel like so many people can be so interesting. And the more somebody is so who they are, uh -huh. the more fascinating they are. Oh, it's just it's so, it's so joyful. Yeah. Right. Somebody is who they are. And it's I mean, and, you know, whatever that is, I find it just so inspiring. Right. So you're definitely a product of how you grew up in certain ways. And how about your mother? Was she like a politician personality, a natural politician like your father? Um, she was more on the social side of things. And she kind of headed up a lot of charities. You know, she was what we would call in, in Sydney a socialite. But, you know, she was one, she was certainly one you know, was kind of looked up to or admired or um, and, and and did a lot for the community, you know, the community of Sydney, which is where she spent most of her time or, you know, wherever that was, even up to Queensland and probably most of Australia, to be honest. Um, she invested a lot of her time in all of that stuff, you know, community stuff, charity stuff. And so whilst it doesn't establish the title politician, it's good. It, it all is. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. So what is, let's say, reflecting back on your whole life and meeting all these different people all over, your family, your parents, you, you've been in so many, you've lived in different places, now you're obsessed with road trips. What have you learned about people? Like if you would summarize some kind of lesson or theory you've developed about people, what would it be? That would probably be that I don't know anything. <laughs> I've still got everything to learn. Um, oh, gosh, that's a tough question. Um, well, it's interesting talking about what the one, the two, the two different types of atmosphere that we were just talking about now, let's say, and you're talking about New Yorkers and, and then people from Alabama and Georgia and Florida and whatever else. I guess it's a bit of an old adage, you know, don't judge a book by its cover because, mm -hmm. you know, as much as you would, you know, you can feel the salt of the earth type person in, in, in Georgia. Uh, and then you watch people race past you in New York city. The people in New York city are just as good. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, like, I, like I remember the other day, it was probably, I don't know, or four weeks ago and you know the place is always moving you know what i mean moving the streets are moving there's, there's bikes and walking people and cars and trucks and it's just going it's all you know what i mean and then something happened in the middle of one of the walkways and a lady had fallen over oh. and she was fine but it was fascinating the response Everybody stop. Everybody. The truck driver. Do they help? Yeah. They all got out. Have their cars, you know, guy across the street. I went over. You know, it was this amazing kind of moment. And I was like, oh, you could feel it. Because when you talk to, you know, the guy who opens the door at the thing, or thing you know, you can feel them and you can feel there's this, this thing there. But they're moving. They're, you know, they know that's the life, right? And when something happens, you know, I, I was just, it was quite an extraordinary moment, right? Because you kind of look at them and, you know, if you're an Alabamian, you go, those people are too quick and too fast and whatever else. But no, right, no. They may be rushing, but they don't not feel or not prioritize people. I think oh. they may look busy, but it doesn't mean... I agree. I think I think New Yorkers get a bad rap in terms of that. You know, it's an image everybody has, but it's not really true. It might have been more kind of astonishing, let's call it, to to be to be able to move that quickly, and then if something happens, stop. 
take heed. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, it's just, it's, I think people are just, I, look, I, I, I love doing what I do because I love exploring people. You know, it's interesting on, on our show because, you know, you get all these actors come in every episode, you get different group of actors, you know, and so you get different group of people. And so you get introduced to all of these people and you get to see all these different personalities and you get to see them. But the great thing about having to go on camera is that you really get to see people. You know, it's not like, a, it's not a walk in the park, you know, you come up a set and you, you have to get in front of a camera with 150 people watching it, you know, and they're all standing around eating their ice cream, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and you got to go and be the best you can on, on, you know, for, whatever period of time it is and you really get to see the see these people for who they are you know because when it's the stress is is there right yeah yeah you get to see the truth in a little bit you know and it's kind of this beautiful thing and uh, and so i guess in, to answer your question i don't know i just feel like i don't know people keep amazing me i guess i think also that you how you treat them is probably key to how they feel because you, you know, they go on set and you're the main guy, right? And so they're probably, especially people coming in, it's not their show. They're not that comfortable. They don't know the whole deal. Like you're saying, they're nervous or whatever. They're not sure. And then they come in and you can be one way or another to them. They don't know how you're going to be, but I'm sure I know how you are with them. I can feel it. You're the way that you're talking about right now. Like that's how, how you are now is probably how you are then with them. And it mm. probably makes a difference and then it helps them do their thing better. That's just an assumption mm. I'm going to make based mm -hmm. on what I, I, love, and I love. And I love kind of, you know, I love watching them shine, you know? Yeah. I mean, I always say, because when I say that to anybody, I don't, I kind of, I always, you know, I, I do come from a kind of slightly British upbringing. And so you don't ever like to, you know, I, I always found it difficult to take a compliment, all that kind of stuff, right? I've had to learn that. And I think from my wife and my daughter who allowed me to kind of do that kind of thing. But I was brought up in the whole kind of very British, uh, about, you know, the toot your own horn kind of thing. But I do love, and I, I always say that I love, I love it for my, because it makes the show better, you know what I mean? But I do actually really love watching people express themselves and watching them dig in and and do good right i love people walking away at the end of the day and going oh that's good yes right so i'm thinking to myself my wheels are turning as i'm doing this and if you weren't so busy i would ask you to every so often i actually have somebody interview me on my show and yeah. i feel like you would be good at that because of your interest <laughs> What? Oh, I'll do that for sure. I'm not too busy. I am. Really? Yes, I'm, you are busy. What are you talking about? Yeah. I just have to come up with a few more fake doctor's appointments. <laughs> that was a real doctor's appointment. I had do doctor's doctor's appointments. But, um, Please. It took so long for us to get that, this talk back on the I, books. But you know what? I'm so excited because it kind of happened exactly the way it was meant to. And, and thank you for having me back on, by the way. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to. Um, but um, I'll do that in a heartbeat. I would love to do that. Really? Would you like oh, to sit yeah. in the interviewer's chair? Yeah. I'm not sure how good I'd be, but I'd, I'd, I would love it. I feel like because you're, you know, you're interested in humanity, right? And I feel like you're, you, I sense it. I know. I know who would be good and who wouldn't. That's why I'm thinking of it. That's why the wheel started turning. So if you have time and you want to do it, let's do it. And if you don't, then let's not it's no big deal. i would do that for sure so do i come up with the questions or do you do, so i can kind of okay great i'll do that for sure and you can you can they can be any kind of questions like whatever actually interests you so i'll give you a little tip as an interviewer is for me personally i may have a list of questions ahead of time that i might consider or topics that i might consider bringing up but the best conversations and the best interviews in my opinion come mm -hmm. from listening during the interview mm -hmm. when you're and then when you find yourself interested in what the person's saying then you follow up on that so that's mm -hmm. that's my approach so you're like you could come up with questions but it doesn't have to be that kind of thing where it's yeah, like oh, it's, it to, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and i think that would be natural for you anyway 
Mm-hmm. So that I personally really like to listen to interviews like that or watch interviews like that much more than these just strict questions and answers. So I think it's easier Mm also. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not very to... good at this at the strict question answer, just so you know. Oh, you're not? <laughs> not really, because when I go on like, you know, those um dog shows that, that are very kind of time yeah. driven, I get because I just I ramble too much. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I also and I also like to finish a thought before or I like to finish something before I move on to the other thing, you know what I mean? Yes. So if even if, you know, the question was what did you have for breakfast? And then the next question is where are you going tomorrow? I gotta finish my breakfast story before I <laughs> before I move on to my tomorrow story, if that makes sense. So I can't watch shows like that either because to me they feel so unnatural. Like it's cringy for me. to watch that a lot of times because I know, especially the ones that are pre-produced and like rehearsed ahead of time or whatever, you know, like the late night shows. But Mm -hmm. because of that, you need that kind of platform where you can talk in that way. So that's why I think you'll be good at this because it is that slower paced. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so, so I'm gonna leave it up to you and then if you feel like you wanna do it for sure, then you tell me when it works for you. No, I'm, we're going to do it for sure. We're, Okay. we're, so it, it might take me a little bit to, how long, do you have a season or do you kind of just... Yeah, so I don't really have a season, I keep going. So if we did like February, March or something, would that work? Yeah, that's good. Okay, okay, cool. So let's do that. Yeah, because, yeah, let me think, yeah, because January, oh, Jan, January, February, kind of, got to get ready for January, February. <laughs> Who are you telling? I know it kills me, Oh, but that's God. why we, that's why we get in the car and drive to Florida and I'll be doing Yeah. the same thing in February at a certain point. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's, you know, cause we spend, we spend 10 hours outside every day during January, February. Right. Right. So you really feel it. I forgot. You're really Yeah. out there. So like last night I was shooting, it was 32 degrees. So do they dress you? Like, do they give you the things that you need to be able to do that? Personally, nobody dresses me because nobody understands how much I need to put on. to be able to cope with how, because don't, I'm Australian, right? So I'm a, I grew up in Sydney or Queensland. And if, if it got below 70, you know, you're heading north to get in more sun, right? And then same with uh, um, California, in Los Angeles, if it got below 70, I start putting on thermals. Love it. <laughs> Try. So, so what do you do then? The, how do you dress? How do you dress warmly enough for these location shoots? Oh man, I layer like I layer like crazy. I've got I've come up with a routine of like how you know depending on the temperature. It's really been quite bizarre lately, actually, because the temperature started. We started out at um, upstate New York. The other day it was twenty eight degrees. Started in the morning, Brutal. and then and then in the middle of the day it was fifty five. So you can imagine Yeah. how I had shed Yeah. <laughs> shed the layer. Yeah. That's why layers are perfect. Layers are exactly perfect for this weird Yeah. weather. I do layers and you've always got to keep your feet warm. Your feet are key, right? So you got to have, I do those like Ugg insole things in all my shoes. And then I do those heater things, you know, those heater things that you can slide into your, The toe warmers. yeah, but then the whole foot, it's the toe warmer thing, but it's a whole foot. Oh, I think I need those. Are they Those big though? Do they take up a lot of space? no, no, no. They're so good. The only thing is you got to find a way to get them in properly so they don't kind of bunch up and feel uncomfortable. Once you've got that down, you're, you're good. Okay, I'm gonna look for those because my feet get freezing in the winter. That's Oh like yeah, the one thing. problem. Once feet are cold, the whole body gets cold. Yeah, and then what do you do for your hands? My hands, I just wear thick gloves, and you, if I gets cold, cold, I stuff those hand warmer things in the gloves. Right, right. And then you have to hold a gun and stuff in the I in just the oh, show. I do. I use gloves. Now you know, not. I'm not saying that's the most professional way to do it if you're the FBI guy, but the difference between me and the FBI agent is. Um, aside from the obvious, is that I'm out for, you know, six hours of time, then I take a half hour break, and then I'm out for another six hours. You know what I mean? So, and I'm out the whole time, most of the time. So it's not like you go and you get the bad guy and within an hour or whatever, you're inside somewhere. I'm out the whole time. Right, right. So it, it, you have to, to me, 
for me, I, the way that I find that it works best is you have to maintain your body warmth that whole time, right? Yeah. So yeah. whatever whatever that is, you know, that's what I try to do. Okay, so I, I'm looking at the time and we, I have to wrap up because I'm going to yeah. I have another thing. I'm going to see yeah, yeah. Howie Mandel tonight. I've never Are seen you him serious? perform. Yeah. Oh, I love Howie Mandel. I have not actually seen him perform. This will be the first time, but is he going to do his his? Um, did you ever? I mean, I don't know the if glove, you knew. The glove, right? The glove. Did you ever see his stuff in the nineties? I've heard him talk about it, but I don't think I've even seen. It. I mean, I remember watching him on the show Saint Elsewhere back in the day, in like the, it must have been the eighties. That wasn't okay. his comedy; he was acting. Just because I don't want to, I don't want to warn you okay. for anything or whatever but he had you got to look once you once you've gone and seen him and enjoy and and go but once you've done it go look up some of the stuff that he used to do okay in the 90s because he's crazy okay i will totally do that i'm gonna look yeah. him up after i want to do one last thing but you also brought up we or i actually brought it up i guess with the gun thing what are your thoughts on that whole situation with the alec baldwin uh film shoot because you oh, have a gun you were have a gun every every episode probably right you're yeah I mean, what a horrible thing to happen in, to, to anybody and everybody, and any particularly those involved. But it, it it rippled through the whole industry and those kind of things. Too, you know, um, we're very diligent. We're very diligent, okay? and most of the time we're flat. But we don't have any guns that even could even close to operate, right? So there's no there's no so there's nothing that ever comes to our step that could even remotely fire something out of it oh, okay but isn't that how it should be why is it isn't every set like that well look i'm guessing sometimes particularly if you're doing a period piece you can't get guns like that or i don't know i don't know they but it's like hollywood they can make anything i would think yeah i mean i guess what you do right is you go to a old gun store and you get the old looking guns and you know you know they're all those things are meant to be plugged yeah but, yeah. um, you know, the one thing it has done is just made us more conscious, you know, so but all of our, you know, nothing, we, we have everything we deal with is replica. We don't, we don't, we don't have anything that's actually realistic on our set okay. and never have, by the way, we were always very, you know, I, I think that being in the wolf world and dealing with all of that stuff on such a consistent basis, they have to be so careful. Yeah, and we're sure. always really kind of on it. Um, and now even more so. That makes uh, sense. I wish everything was like that. It seems like uh, it should be. Yeah. So let's wrap up. Thank you for that too. Let's be in touch about you being the interviewer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if well, I don't, um, if you don't hear from me or something, just remind me because I do get a little weird in January, February. Okay, so I was too cold. <laughs> I, I feel you. I, I think I start to freeze. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep that in mind. <laughs> that was Julian McMahon. Stay tuned for an extra little bonus bit. And by the way, my Alexa story actually involved a dollhouse, and I'm not a hundred percent clear what the details of that story are. But yes, it was dollhouse. Also, the name of the mall where they taped that special mid-season episode is The American Dream, which is at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Links to my first talk with Julian, our YouTube videos, my talk with Jeremy Sisto, and my Amazon shop are in today's show notes. Coming your way very soon, I talk to an Olympic champion, a Broadway god, a talk show icon, and many more exciting and fascinating guests. And... Stay tuned for my special episode where Julian interviews me. Well, if we ever get that on the books. I'm Kara. Thanks for hanging out with me and Julian. Talk to you very soon. I also always like to offer one of these mugs. Do you want it? Would you like a mug, a really famous mug? Oh, wait, it's, I feel like it's not showing up. It's a nice big m mug. It says really famous. I love a mug. Okay. So tell me where to send what it. You got I have water. Oh, okay. I have water for the for when I'm taping. I usually put water in, but I normally my favorite thing in the winter. This helps me in the winter because my yeah. hands get so cold. I yeah. heat up water and I just squeeze lemon juice into it, and then I yeah. hold it, and it actually warms up my fingers and my body. Yeah. Oh, Hot no, water with lemon. Because I've been doing a lot of teas lately. 
and done. Um, can't do teas? I can't do teas. I keep trying. I cannot. Uh, you know what? I got to make you a tea. I got to make you a tea. <sighs> so how's this for, for an example? So because Harney and Sons does like some of my favorite teas, right? But they also just came out with their holiday blends, right? So they got the hot cinnamon spice and then they got the holiday tea and then they got the white Christmas tea. And I, um, the guy who drives me back and forth to set is this great guy named Rich. And he's such a sweetheart. Every morning he gets the coffee, right? And lately we've been so early that the coffee shops are not open. And I also switched last week. I switched from coffee to tea because every now and then I take a break from coffee and just drink tea. Okay. I went to these holiday okay. blends and he's like, I gave him a tea. He's like, uh, oh. and I, he's like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I can feel like I'm going, ah, oh, you know, and, and I'm like, okay, I've got to, because I like perfecting those little things. Right? Okay. I got to go. What am I talking about? Anyway. So I, I made him another one of exactly the same tea and I gave it to him. I was like, this is really good. But I had to find the right balance. You got to find the right balance of hot water, the tea, and a little bit of honey. Okay, you got you got to find the right. I, I get right. you. I get okay. you. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna prove some other kind of uh, theories on that one. But you go enjoy Howie, and thank you. What a pleasure as always, and and thanks for having thank me. Thank you.